I've been playing one of Factorio's longest mods, Space Exploration Plus Crastorio 2, for over 200 hours. We've colonized several planets, optimized intergalactic supply chains, and even built monolithic structures. We're in the end game now, but with Factorio's biggest update ever, Space Age looming closer every day, our race to the finish before it's released is anything but certain. Will we stick the landing, or will the save file be abandoned and forgotten? Welcome to a race against time and space. This video shows you how to load paper into the multi-purpose feeder of your printer. This is part 15, last time we started building out space stuff, almost completing the first ring of all four proper space sciences. This time I want to keep pushing progress on all four space sciences. And it's about time this space exploration thing was starting to feel like play six games of Factorio on different planets at the same time, which I'm sure was a catchy name of the mod at some point and just barely lost out to space exploration. Anyway, after setting up stone mining on Navis, I started taking notes again after finding it hard to orient my stream of consciousness while I'm not playing. Loop the train stop, prod mods for the substrate, pick up RTGs for armor. Okay, thank you, whiteboard. RTGs provide infinite power and are a great upgrade to the burner generators in my armor. Hopefully, I never need to think about adding fuel to power my equipment grid again. I've actually had these for quite a while. I just died in a pyramid and haven't been back on Navis to replace them in a long time. The whole reason I came to increase stone mining was because the rough data substrate, which eventually makes blank data cards, is run dry. Adding a 6 million stone mine plus making glass nearly twice as efficiently with a pyroflux recipe, plus these productivity modules for good measure makes me feel good. I have other things to think about. Like staring at this thing some more. I'm really glad I can add this to my billable hours. I want to touch on a natural question that pops up again and again in this mod. What should I do first? For instance, I've generally chosen to grab resources before research which has benefits and downsides. I research stuff really fast with all my resources and have large amounts of advanced resources piling up on planets, but the interplanetary factories I have set up are without the upgrades that the research gives in some cases. I bring this up because after the level 1 sciences, there is probably a best order for setting up level 2s. The most natural choice is Biological Science 2 for the intelligence research effectively reducing the cost of all future research by 5%, which is huge. But that requires these bioscrubbers, which need vitalic acid, which needs the dreaded nitric acid. The problem is there's no way to make these in space without first bringing nitric acid to space due to needing planet-only fluids like ammonia and nitrogen. Additionally, sending fluids into space is still an absolute pain, being horrifically inefficient and requiring barrels. And then I realized I can make the scrubbies 100% on the Vidimlage planet. Just combine nitric acid, which I already make tons of there, with Vidimlage extract, which I also make tons of, and get vitalic acid. Combine this with coal, glass, and steel to make scrubbers, and they can be loaded directly into the rocket. I can even add productivity modules, which is not possible in space, and I was happy to realize all of this and execute on it in the downtime of waiting for the rough data substrate to be manufactured. With the satellite view, I can even set this up without visiting the planet. Totally satisfied. Really hope I don't need a shit ton of these. And... yeah. The f I don't usually yell at my computer. You have to understand what 300 hours does, your honor. Uh, there was a lot of yelling, and there is still a lot of yelling to come, but I'm going to leave most of it out. Just listen to the damn beeper go off and think about how you would feel, and then imagine me yelling alone at my co You know what? It could happen to anyone, okay? You go through many phases. First, you ignore the sound. Then it enrages you. Then you gain some amount of control over your emotions when it goes off and feel enlightened. And then it makes you explode. Why? There's... There's nothing for you there. There is no fucking pollution coming out of the fucking goddamn train tracks. Your Honor, I actually have a point there. It doesn't make any sense for a biological entity to rapidly attack a structure that is standing completely still. It would be like the biters attacking a rock. Anything that dumb would have gone extinct, wasting its caloric energy on something with no potential reward. Also, it's annoying as fuck. I'd like to rest my case. Biters should not act like this, so I didn't plan for it. Why? So I fixed it, just like the last 20 times. Moving on. Uh, genius. Yes, that's a loader trying to unload an inserter. Moving on. 
The first cargo rocket we ever set up was sending sulfur and plastic back to Navis from Morgan. Shout out to all the real ones who remember. Anyway, even with 20 oil fields on Navis, we still don't make plastic fast enough for all the low density structure and rocket control units we're plowing through, so I set it back up. I was pleasantly surprised at how easy this was to do from the satellite view, and I'm really enjoying the feature overall. Finally, I set up a copper mine for good measure, and I was headed back to space to finish off material science and the level 1 sciences as a whole. You know, it's always nice to come back to deadlock trains, a gentle reminder that your factory's been doing fuck all for the last 10 hours. To be serious though, even with screwing up the LTN configuration a ton, the amount of time and resources it has saved me is off the scale. I would almost go so far as to say it is necessary for this mod. The problem that, spoilers, I won't realize for another 30 hours is that the fluid stations can't hold enough fluid for their deliveries. I set the request amount to 30,000 for a large container that can hold 50,000 fluid, and the default is to deliver when the amount is 1,000 or more less than the requested amount, so if it hits 29,000, which is 1,000 less than the requested 30,000, then it tries to add 25,000 more, which is the train amount, then it fails to offload 100% of the fluid because 29,000 plus 25,000 is greater than 50,000 leaving some in the train car and causing the equivalent of a train apocalypse. It unloads random fluids everywhere. It was infuriating. And then I learned what the problem was and felt like a moron. It was great. Alright, I'm being a bit of a negative Nancy today. Data cards are being made again, science is finally back to sciencing, things are working, progress is being made, rest assured. Although I initially wanted to make Biological 2 first, I looked through the tech tree and Material Science 2 gives me a space elevator, which is absolutely massive. So massive, it got prioritized over the intelligence that Biological 2 would give us. Right now, I'm thinking that after finishing up Material Science 1, I immediately make Material Science 2, set up a space elevator, then go Biological Science 2, and I didn't scout out Astronomics versus Energy 2, so I'll think about that one later. I also found this tantalizing gem, Universal Simulation. Energy Science 3 is a prerequisite and requires insight from all four disciplines, but it makes significant data at the most efficient rate, about 66% significant data per resource more than I am making right now with astroenergistic simulations. I'm not on Science 3s, but I'll definitely keep this in mind once all the Science 2s are set up. I've always loved non-linear paths in games, and thinking through which science to do when has been fascinating. There are so many ways I thought about doing this. I could blitz through all four biological sciences first to get the intelligence upgrades as well as productivity module upgrades and save tons of resources in the future on all the productivity stacked in my labs. I could get all science ones and then get energy science three just to get the universal simulations first, which also saves tons of resources. Astronomics 1 was important because it allowed me to find a planet that had Venomelage, Crynite, Vulcanite, and even Immersite all in one, saving me tons of rocket trips. Material Science 2 gives space elevators, which also saves tons of resources, and I'll explain how they work when we get there. It's really awesome, and I love the creative possibilities that are on the table here. It really helps when each science requires a soul-crushing four more data cards to be manufactured. Speaking of four more data cards, these are the four needed for my next choice in Material Science 1. They all need blank data cards and material testing packs, which need plastic, copper, immersite, crystals, rare metals, and iron. One of them wants cold thermal fluid, one wants plasma stream, two of them want lube and iridite, with one of those wanting concrete and the other wanting steel. So yeah, train in all the solids and some of the fluids, although they're a little more restrictive. More and more, I've just been underground piping fluid everywhere because they're close enough, which is hilarious because I read the description of the space undergrounds and it says to only use them sparingly as they're not very efficient. Yeah, my ass, I'm going for a damn world record. If you didn't want me to use these, give me underground pipes with more than a five tile range. Otherwise, pipe down there, buddy. Then we take these through the space science loop, combine these four into catalogs, and combine the catalogs with material insight, significant data, and iridite, and we have material science one.
and before I could celebrate, I was met with this. Literally getting trolled, one biter destroying a critical railway. Don't you have other organisms to hunt and eat or something? How do you survive? Get a life. Anyway, material science can now join the central sushi party. That means all science ones are now completed. We can celebrate now. Celebrating in this case, of course, means destroying the entire space science spaghetti base we used to use. As beautiful as it is, I can't look at it anymore, and it's obsolete. I was very tempted to just drag the deconstruct tool over the entire thing, but I'd be deleting a lot of fluid that can be used elsewhere. Just as a side note, if you do this, bots will happily dump uranium into your inventory, which still does damage despite the spacesuit, but the spacesuit has a uranium resistance. I swear to God, who thought this was a good idea? Like, hey, we added this feature. I made it so some substances are more annoying to transport around because they slowly kill you because it's realistic. If it's so realistic, shouldn't I get cancer from this? Shouldn't I never heal from the radiation? Like, your honor, this is totally indefensible. You can't just annoy people and then play the realism card and add armor that incrementally resists damage from holding that resource and then call it a feature. This is a crime. We have fun here, okay? I'm making a train stop for all the orphaned resources from the previous base. It'll take priority over the eye and I actually have loads of iridite, vulcanite, uranium, heavy oil, and light oil up here, which is a pleasant surprise. Those resources all take quite a while to make or are expensive to send to space. And before I was rudely uranium DDoS, I was all excited about the new research that we can grab now. One of these is the all-important Spider-Tron. This thing is incredibly useful as a mobile weapon, roboport, and requester slash provider chest all in one. It would have been very handy to have a few of these on hand on the Vitamolage planet, but at the same time, I need Vitamolage to make them in the first place, so it's kind of a catch-22. Unfortunately, there's no real need for them in space or research, there's no threat, and I can just throw chests and roboports wherever I need, so I have no current need for the new toy, but his day will come, trust me. As promised, Material Science 2 is the next on the chopping block. I had a sea change going into the Science 2s. I don't need four buildings per data card. I can just have one. It'll be much faster to make, take up way less space, and I really don't need four buildings making the data cards. I've been researching everything way faster than I actually need to with tons of research downtime. Plus, beacons are insanely strong. I kinda wish I made just one building per data card to begin with, but at the same time, science ones are an input for science twos and twos for threes and so on, so overbuilding the tech cards for science ones might be helpful when I'm making the full chain of science ones to twos to threes to fours in the future. Material 2's flavor resource is heavy girders made from iridium and vulcanite, and of note, one of the tech cards requires a fluid tank as an input and one an entire locomotive. Granted, the locomotive creates 30 tech cards at a time, but also one and a half thousand scrap every cycle. That's two orders of magnitude more than any other process so far. I'm not complaining though, more scrap means more reusability of stone, copper, iron, and rare metals, which are increasingly being used in everything in space. Also producing the locomotives on site, which only requires copper, iron, and steel as raw resources, implies that the scrap can actually refund stone and rare metals on top of the expected iron and copper, which is unrealistic. But awesome, the implications are huge, I love it. It ends up being so much scrap that I needed two belts to bring it all down, and I doubled my recyclers. Nothing new to see with Science 2s, we just make broad material catalogs with our new cards and then add the previous science as an input and we have Material Science 2. Taking a look at future research, I did find something that might give the Eye of Sauron a run for its money. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And finally, here it is, the Space Elevator Research. Space elevators do two things. It connects power and logistic signals between space and navis, letting me utilize the eight times more efficient solar panels in space to power the planet with ease. And it also allows me to send trains between the ground and space, implying that I'll never need to send a rocket from navis to space again. There is a maintenance cost to the space elevator, but the resources needed per item sent is miles more efficient than sending a cargo rocket 
No more making cargo rocket sections on Navis, and Navis sends by far the most rockets consisting of iron, steel, and copper ingots, green, red, and blue chips, red, green, gray, blue, and yellow science cards, speed, productivity, and efficiency modules, coal, stone, rare metals, rough data substrate, lithium, lithium chloride, and probably more stuff I'm forgetting. The space elevator is going to revolutionize that. But I do have to research it first. In the meantime, I added two more Astronomics cards, which can now combine with the other three to make the combined Astronomics data much more efficiently. Why would it immediately go for this? It doesn't even make sense. It's not biologically. Why did they move on? Why are they fucking genius? Yeah, I lost it. I've been thinking about going back to Horroratum to clean this up, and now I actually can't take it anymore, and I'm doing it. I was fuming. My microphone didn't pick it up at the time, but I was just psychotically chanting, I'm going to kill you all. And that's what this mod does to you. I like to think of myself as a pretty chill guy. But everyone has their limits, you know? This is very understandable if you think about it. Wait, what did you say? The Geneva Convention? Never heard of it. If you check my badge, sir, you'll actually see I'm here for war. <coughs> Excuse me, to set up a nuclear reactor. No, seriously, look, we got orders that the coal is running out at the burner generators and we're here to install it. Just don't search the jet, okay? We'll even throw in a free filter installation to help reduce the spread of bugs. Don't tell anyone we were here. See ya. Dust my hands off on the way back to space, and uh, you know what that means. I don't think anyone knows what that means. I just think this song's a bop. I decided to just send the recycled stuff back to the material science wing since all the stuff gets used there and it gives us this glorious garbage belt of copper, iron, glass, and rare metals. So this is the space elevator, it gets placed both up here in space and on Navis, but the two points are connected geographically, and wherever you place this thing there needs to be free space on both sides. I kinda expected to just be able to place this on both surfaces wherever I wanted, but if you're a good little boy and read the Informatron, you'd not be surprised by this. Yeah, this kinda throws a wrench in things, honestly. This place seems to be pretty good though, but there's a boat in the way. What the hell? Why is there a boat? Why can't I target it for deletion? What? No matter, we have tools for this. Nice. This is so clunky. Why would you keep firing here? What? Stop. What are you doing? Man, I wish I could read. Well, there we go, at least it worked. And now that this is placed, I just need to continually feed it for space cable per minute, a small price to pay for sending trains directly into space. The Navi's location is actually perfect. It's right next to the rocket, so everything that gets trained in for the rocket can just be rerouted to a nearby train stop and be loaded up and sent into space. It also exchanges energy based on if the train's going up or down, but this shouldn't really affect anything. In other news, a meteor snuck through the defenses on Morrigan and hit the oil field and it's offline, so the sulfur and plastic have been slow and I'm gonna go down there and fix that and set up another giant oil field to hopefully fix this in the future. Thankfully, Morrigan is close enough to travel to by space capsule. What? I ended up in space? Did I click on the right thing? Uh... Yeah, it turns out the trip was to Morrigan orbit, not Morrigan. To get to Morrigan, I'll need nine more rocket fuel, but space capsules force you to limit your inventory, so I brought zero. So I was just floating here stranded. 
I tried to find a convenient save to reload, but I'd lose like 15 minutes of progress, which is far too much. But I ended up using the emergency burn feature of the space capsule because I didn't bring much and I didn't even lose any items for doing it. Just felt like a damn fool with his tail between his legs and I tried again. <laughs> uh. I mean, I guess this counts for exploring space. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh. This planet has like a hundred thousand yield of untapped oil. It should never be low. And that was it really. Back to the space elevator. There is experimentation to be had here. I gotta figure out how to actually send the train back and forth. After looking at it for more than 10 seconds, I kinda saw what the structure was trying to tell me. The left and right sides are the ins and outs, and it turns out it's perfectly lined up with this rail, all skill. I, I don't know what to tell you. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about it. I thought about copying the eye for the train stop, but it doesn't need to be quite as complicated, just does the same thing, load resources on Navis if it's less than the amount at the train station in space. Problem is, LTN doesn't work with space elevators, like it does, but you need a mod for it, and because all the train stations on Navis aren't LTN friendly, I don't want to open that rabbit hole, so I'm just going to send a request signal from space and use that as the signal to load the train. Also, I loaded the resources in backwards, and the train has to reverse direction before unloading. Things I never thought I would have to do in Factorio, but trust me, this does have to happen in order to make the factory work correctly. Just to let the train keep some momentum, I reversed the train stop, allowing for this to work without the turnaround train station. Now for Biological 2, it requires a bunch of bio scrubbies and experimental biomass made from normal biomass and some other bio things. Again, one machine per each of the four data cards should be enough. And then you know the drill, they all spit out the same resources you put into them for no reason and broken data cards that need to be handled on a garbage belt and then you need to combine all four of them into a broad catalog, etc, etc, and then there's Biosands too. It gets old real quick. Can we go back to the whole, like, put two things in and get a thing out? I get the gimmick here. I'm just a little sick of having five belts going into and out of every building. Can you help me out here? The answer is no, but on the bright side, space elevators mean that sending fluids to space is actually viable now. This means that I can make nitric acid on Navi's train it up to space and then make the vitalic acid here, which is why we went with space elevators first. The bio two recipes all make so much more sense like this. What the fuck is this? Help, step bro, my train's stuck in the space elevator. <clears throat> I think I glitched it by jumping in the train the second it was going up, and now I can't get out of the train. The acceleration was also turned down to like 120th, so you can see the engine chugging, but I'm just slowly getting released out of here. The stars aligned to make sure that the only way out was to just sit here accelerating for 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm going full speed, I promise. What? Oh, what? We're going. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I have no idea. Y'all start theorizing. Yes. 
I also don't want to talk about this. It was actually pretty close. If I didn't make it, I would have been so pissed. Jesus. 300 hours in and we're still having nail biter moments. I thought we would have been coasting at this point. Well, that's what you can expect here, I guess. You can also expect the builds here to become less and less aesthetic as time goes on. I started out all organized and now it's just full spaghetti. If it fits, it ships, just get it done. You're paid by the hour, little bro. In any case, there's Bio 2. At least I can be happy with the little dopamine hits of some new research. Intelligence 2, 5% more productivity in labs. I wish I could calculate all the resources that's going to save me. It's so beautiful. We also are going for Speed Module 6. Notably, they are actually a prerequisite for future research. Probably not going to actually use them because they're really expensive. Productivity modules are also expensive, but they have a payback period and then start giving you profits, so they're an actual investment and I will be trying to use them. Speed modules, on the other hand, just make things go faster, which is good, but like, speed module 4s have been more than enough so far, so I don't really feel like making tons of speed module 6s or anything like that because they get exponentially more expensive. We can also get Vitalic Reagents, which will be needed for Bio 3 and need a lot of Vitalic Acid, so I'm even more happy that I am bringing Nitric Acid to space. Technically, I can make the Vitalic Acid on Navi so I can Productivity Module it there, but then I'd need to train down the advanced resources, including the Vitamolage Extract to Navi's first, and I currently can't be asked. Next up is Astronomics 2. I've already upgraded the combined Astronomics cards to be more efficient, and thankfully the recipes for Astronomics are simple compared to Biological. It's generally just a few more buildings for observation frames this time, Microwave and X-Ray, turn those into data cards, and then a simple recipe with the combined Astronomics card, and a more complex one, and then you put them through the science loop. Astronomics is also maintaining the best aesthetics of all the science branches, so respect. Why aren't you shooting? Shoot. Shoot, 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 why the fuck? The fuck happened? So, the nuclear reactor didn't start up, the coal mine dried up, leading to blackouts, laser turrets couldn't shoot, the entire planet devolved into a death spiral, and the dreaded attack notification sound went off at 180 RPM. What was the issue? This planet didn't make normal inserters, so the entire nuclear blueprint, all the uranium processing and Covarex and nuclear fuel was made correctly, and I just didn't put normal inserters into a provider chest, and this apocalypse happened. By the time I realized it was too late and the biters were advancing on the cargo rocket, I was infuriated. You mean the fucking power? Where is it? Where? 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 Why? What? My last hope was fixing the issue and hoping for nuclear power, but it takes a long time to start up and there's so much damage done already. And thank god for autosave, I have one that is about 15 minutes before the apocalypse. More than enough time to fix the issue, get nuclear power online, and prevent this whole catastrophe. And we're 300 hours in, and it's like the Super Bowl level of drama. How did I get here? I'm supposed to be floating around in a spaceship, sipping LaCroix, chilling. Oh my god, oh, I've never seen anything so beautiful. Just to contextualize a bit, I would have been set back so far if biters ate that whole planet. I'd have to crash land, bring all the miners and belts and warehouses and machines, a rocket silo, a core miner. I'd have to kill all the biters that were sitting on that territory. It would have been hell. The foresight to bring that reactor for when the coal runs out, but to keep things online, I thought it was no big deal at the time, and it ended up saving my life. 
If I think about it long enough, I start to physically get stressed. I'm even doubting the efficacy of the nuclear plant. Like, the mine only has 4,000 uranium ore in it. But it's just more wood for the fire, honestly. Getting through the space sciences means getting a spaceship. And getting a spaceship should open up possibilities for getting these resources. If I keep chugging, I don't need to think about that planet drowning in bugs. So that's all I can do. Astronomics 2 completed. I can now research aeroframe scaffolds by adding cryonite to aeroframe poles that are made from beryllium. These will be used for Astronomics 3 and a few other important products. Ooh, now that is exciting. Not sure why I have the presence of HAL 9000 in the moment, but I'm putting more respect on beryllium. Not only does it provide a more efficient cargo rocket section recipe, it now also gives a more efficient low density structure recipe. Both of these are used heavily, so thank you beryllium for being so supportive. When I make a tier list of raw resources, I will remember this, brother. Time to round off the Science 2s with Energy 2. I didn't scout out the research, but Energy 2 is kind of cracked. It does require a bunch more fluids based on plasma stream getting different colors, but at least it doesn't need a whole ass train for every research cycle, so in the pain in the ass scale, it'll only get a 4 out of 10. Energy science focuses on holmium, and combining it with plastic, we can make holmium cable needed for two of the sciences, and the other two end up needing particle stream and proton stream, the red and green versions of plasma stream. If I haven't mentioned before, they all also need blank data cards, just like every other science, and so far one belt running east and one west have been enough to supply the data cards for all of the sciences. I plan to keep splitting and spaghettiing off that belt for each data card, and I don't really care about throughput. I also added a train bringing advanced resources not found on Navis back down to Navis for processing things that want it. A lot of infrastructure that I... Every fucking time. <clears throat> a lot of the infrastructure I use, assemblers, inserters, beacons, stuff like that are all made in the bot mall on Navis, so I still want to do some processing with these resources on Navis. Also, space doesn't allow for productivity modules, so if I want to be more efficient with processing, I need to do it terrestrially. Advanced assemblers, chemical stations, and furnaces have all been researched while they are larger buildings, they have much faster processing and more module slots than their predecessors which will help make factories both more compact and efficient, especially when thinking about new colonies as the stack sizes that these buildings fit into are the same as their lower tier equivalents. They require immersite gears and plates to be made as well as heavy bearings, so I'm glad to have these tools for the next planet I might visit. I'm also low on nitric acid, so I need a mineral water field for the first time ever on Navis. Mineral water, you're kinda ass. It took you this long to be useful, and I'm gonna remember this for the tier list. Another side quest popped up. The recycled scrap feeding back into material science dumped too much glass into the material science warehouse because I haven't needed material science for a while, but have still been producing scrap. I noticed I was continually running low on blank data cards, so I rerouted the iron and stone over to make rough data substrate, while keeping the copper and rare metals flowing to the material science as they're less common and probably won't overload the warehouse on their own. This little factory just makes glass and silicon out of stone using the more efficient vulcanite recipes for both, and I was very satisfied with how compact I could get it. This also just feels like the right choice. I've been plowing through data cards and overflowing on scrap byproducts, so I love that I'm killing two birds with one stone here. And the biters are yapping on Navis this time, and I discovered this handy ride feature on the space elevator. No more needing space capsules or a train to ride in. Biters attacking Navis are much easier to deal with too. I can fly over and reinforce very easily. I'm just surprised they actually got in. It's been so long, and Navis has been so well defended. I guess behemoths have become more common and the laser turrets need help keeping up. Either way, I'm happy to just stack more laser turrets. With that fixed up, I can finish Energy 2. I want to underline that updating the insight recipe every single time you go for a new science is very annoying. It's mostly the way that I built them, not expecting that the recipe would change or that I should be able to expand them, so I'm coping, but yeah, I guess I'm just coping. 
Either way, all science twos are done. I'm halfway through the space science. Feels great. I went material science one last time, then immediately material science two. This time I went energy science two last and I'm going to immediately do energy science three. Funny how that works. Energy Science 3 seemed like such an obvious choice, though. It unlocks universal simulations, which I mentioned earlier are the most efficient way to get significant data. But first, I have All Science 2's manufactured time to comb through the research. Energy 2 is actually a powerhouse. It doesn't matter too much, but it has way more useful things than Astronomics 2. Starting with Holium Solenoids, I then get Flat Solar Panel 2's, Energy Shield 2's, Space Probe Superchargers, which charge up to 64 robots at a time instantly, compact and wide area beacons, which give way more speed than the basic beacons I'm using, Pylon Substations, which give 64 by 64 energy grid, Portable Art. RTG 2's, Personal Laser Defense 3, Laser Artillery, Efficiency Module 6, okay, that one's complete ass, but the rest, holy cow, this is a massive power spike for military and infrastructure. As much as I felt a need to plow through the second half of the space science research, I also recognize that these tools are very helpful. Wide and compact area beacons in particular are amazing, and I'm adding them to the space mall so that I can use them up here a little bit. I'm also going to make flat solar panel twos, which generate twice as much power as ones, and with space's massive eight times solar boost, just a few dozen will shoot me up to around six gigawatts of power production, and with the space elevator, this will be powering Navis as well. It took until now to feel the whole space exploration thing starting to click, like I'm actually harnessing tons of power in orbit around a planet and sending it back to a massive factory on the planet with a space elevator. Here's Energy Science 3, a lot of the inputs are similar to the 2's so I can put the research servers adjacent to them. Science 3's also come with another more efficient insight recipe, this time also requiring blank data cards, which is an unpleasant surprise. You can really see how cramped those supercomputers are getting here. There's a lot of different types of junk that these recipes can spit out. Use data cards, broken data cards, scrap, contaminated scrap. At first, I tried to use splitters to handle them separately at each junction. Looking back, it would have made more sense to just have a dedicated junk belt. I'm about 80% of the way there, that's kind of how it works right now, but there are some split-offs and spaghetti splitters that lead to confusion with scrap ending up where data cards should be and other mishaps like that. All of the junk goes toward the middle, so having one warehouse that stores all the junk, then using loaders to sort the junk from the beginning would have been a lot more simple and elegant. Plus, you know that I like sushi. I would love to see sushi junk belts with all the broken data cards and scrap together on the same belt. That would just feel so right, like a big junkyard. The last piece for Energy 3 is the Holmium Solenoid, so I'm importing iron ingots and Holmium to the top side of the energy silo. Then we can finally get our universal simulations and a few other goodies. I have to admit, I also got itchy, started prepping a Spider-Tron. I've just wanted to configure one since we unlocked them. They're so cool and useful. Again, this is a provider chest roboport death machine all in one, and it comes with a lot of options, but this bad boy is just going to sit here for now. Kind of like a reminder of what's to come, a motivator, a memento mori. Energy 3 is finished, and as repetitive as the science tasks are, the feeling of progress is real, both in terms of scientific and technological progress, but also this giant, vividly colorful behemoth of a factory I'm forced to make. Quantum processors are the first step for NG3, then I can get supercomputers 2 and the coveted universal simulations. I've been enjoying the wide area beacons, but there is one major problem. It doesn't perfectly fit. <laughs> it's a 4x4 structure and the previous beacons are 3x3s, so the science is not symmetrical anymore. I'm usually not the OCD type with this kind of thing, but it being off-center is distressing. It's a general problem that permeates this mod. Upgrades are oftentimes larger buildings and you'll need to make new blueprints. It's easy enough to fix and plan around and all that, but 
Masymmetry. Energy Science 3 requires quantum entanglement data, which curiously only requires blank data cards and cold thermofluid. Fittingly, it has a 50% chance to succeed, but the recipe seemed really simple for an Energy 3 input. It turns out these cards are inputs to making the quantum processors, so I'm going to also produce them closer to the bot mall and transport them via provider chest. They're a simple recipe, thankfully, and it makes it easy to squeeze them in. The solar panel twos are done cooking. I really like their look. A red solar panel is just so cool. And these things generate so much power. I'm not even gonna replace that many of my current solar panels. I just don't need to. Oh, that's awesome. Bio3 came up next. What can I say? I love me some intelligence and new productivity modules. One of the cards requires combining biomass with uranium-235, which is horrifying if you think about it, so I'm not going to think about it. The rest of the cards require significant biomass, made from experimental biomass, made from biomass, experimental biomass outputs biomass, and significant biomass outputs experimental biomass, and then we gotta make vitalic acid and vitalic reagents in there, so the bio side of things is a complete mess. I am really afraid of when I have to make bio 4. But that's bio 3, it took me way longer to position than I am showing just because of how I built it and bio makes you feed everything back into everything which is very tedious but it's done and the goodies are on the way. Or at least that's what I would say if resources didn't start drying up. Remember that we have a very long running manufacturing of advanced resources and long running does not equate to fast. I also occasionally peek back at other planets and realize they have stopped for one reason or another. Maybe they ran out of sand or a warehouse filled up and is preventing things from happening or a rocket didn't launch. Things that wouldn't generally show up for a normal playthrough, but over a very long time Murphy's Law rears its ugly head and throws an edge case at you that you didn't even think was possible. Holmium is being processed here, but only because processing uranium creates stone to make sand. There is no stone being mined here. It's weird to think that if I didn't set up uranium, of all things, the holmium processing would have stopped. The planet does have several multiple million stone mines, they're just far away, and I'm not on the planet to set them up. All the research we've been doing has drained our stash, but I'm not too worried. Research only has to happen once, and Holmium is only heavily used in energy science, so I can just research other things, and this hopefully just regenerates over time. In other news, we've been slowly producing prod mod 6s, which I believe added with the 6 module slots and 2 intelligence bonuses takes us to 94% productivity. Research cost is nearly halved, that is so good. It starts to make some of the really expensive infinite researches like mining productivity, which is over 8,000 research packs at this point, more appealing. I know I just mentioned that if Holmium runs out, it's okay, but 30 seconds later, I'm actually wrong. The maintenance of the space elevator requires space cable, which needs Holmium cable. It's gone into maintenance mode and will eventually shut off if I don't get some Holmium delivered. It can always be reactivated, so it's not a huge deal, but I also don't want the resource deliveries to shut down. But I'm just going to ignore it. It'll be fine. You might be curious why I have so many space assemblers making things. It looks like a bit of a waste of space for a mall that's nowhere near close to always producing. It's because most space buildings, including Supercomputer 2s, require a space manufacturing to be built. For no reason just to absolutely destroy your free space and scaffolding supplies, that's all. Astronomics 3 wants gamma ray lenses, which can be made from multispectral mirrors and a few other inputs, so it felt natural to produce them near each other and use the same train station. 
similar to the Holmium situation, the biological research as well as productivity module sixes have been plowing through my Vitamage products. Again, not much to do about this, just wanted to note that I had warehouses full of extract and spice, and they've since been consumed. It made me start to worry a bit about the Holmium situation as I saw the space cable dwindle down. There is a stone mine near where I convert oil into energy on the Holmium planet, and it's not that far away. Real ones remember the big pipe, now it's time for Big Belt. There's only 20 construction bots on this planet, so this will take absolutely forever to build, but when it's done, it will speed up the Holmium processing. Sometimes when I'm being this lazy, not just visiting the planet to make a sane solution, I think, is this really being lazy or am I actually putting in more work for a worse solution? Eh, no time to answer that. Unfortunately, I found bot speed 8. We gotta research it. Bot speed is extremely powerful. I realized that it not only makes bots more productive, but also makes them safer by allowing bots to finish their job faster and keep less bots in the air, leading to less bot attrition. These superchargers will also help with that. I can finally take down the comically large number of roboports favoring a handful of superchargers. These can charge up to 64 bots and charge them faster, also leading to less bot time in the air. I will kinda miss bots dropping like flies everywhere though. I hope there's a stat for bot deaths at the end. While I'm down here, I can also bolster core mining. The miner itself is stuck at 15 per second with zero productivity, but in the crushers, you can get more core fragment per core fragment. I have a bunch of productivity mod fives the research labs used to use and coupled with the wide area beacons and speed modules, I can pump out what looks like more than a red belt of each basic resource now. And core mining is also basically free. The 50 megawatt energy cost is like one flat solar panel too. Checking back in on the big stone belt. They're getting there, let them cook. What? You look stressed. Talk to me. What? I, I didn't say I was proud of it. Oh, don't don't look at me like that. Actually, fuck you. I'm a big belt billion. I'm proud of it. Okay. We're getting down to the wire, pun intended, on the space elevator. It's gonna be close whether the Holmium rocket will launch in time. I've even slowed down the train schedules that go to and from space as each trip increases the amount of cable used a tiny bit. Those gamma lenses we made earlier will make gamma observations in a gamma ray telescope for astronomics. These recipes now use super cooled thermal fluid instead of cold thermal fluid, so pipe mania has been off the charts. So much so, even the majestic astronomics wing is beginning to look quite a bit cramped. It's been a while since we looked at Planet Hagen, and I like it here. It's going well, except for when the beryl gets dumped into the iron ore. But it's fine, here's a derpy solution, it works, trust me. You know, I am a little surprised. I thought there would be so much more to talk about with the space science research, but there really isn't. I'd be saying more or less the same thing 16 times, switching out a few resources. Given the recipes and heavy usage of many different fluids, I get the impression that I'm supposed to be using trains and segmenting these factories in different areas a lot more than I am. But I absolutely love how the factory looks, especially because I envisioned this in my head about two months ago, and I love actually seeing it go up the way I planned it. The space elevator is down to just 57 cable intelligence 3 stalled out at 95%. We only have six more space sciences to go. I hate to leave you on a cliffhanger, but I got more Factorio to play. Hoping to finish space science in the next one.